So this was the first shoot I did with uh, Juan Funes. Uh, this was shot down in Van Nuys, California. Uh, shout out to Ricky Funes uh, in the Ten Goose Boxing Gym, the legendary Ten Goose Boxing Gym. Uh, I met Ricky uh, because I used to shoot for Goose into the promotions, uh, and I met him in uh, New Jersey actually covering the Super Six uh, finals with uh, Andre Ward and Carl Frotch. Uh, so for this shoot, um, I was super excited. We set up this shoot. Um, I set it up with Ricky to photograph his uh, nephew Juan Funes because he was doing his uh, professional boxing debut that week. Uh, his uh, debut was on Saturday and we planned the shoot. I think this was around uh, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and I had a ton of ideas I wanted to try and Ricky was excited, he was familiar with my work. But when I arrived at the gym that day, I had to throw out more than half my ideas, actually pretty much almost all of them. Because when I showed up that day, uh, if you look on this image right here, uh, Juan uh, got sick. He got like a fever or a cough or something. He wasn't feeling well. Um, and uh, that kind of you know, made me have to change plans and everything when I, when I arrived to the gym. So essentially what I had to do is kind of lit dark and moody to not necessarily show his expression because if you look uh, right here, he's just looking kind of tired and doesn't have a lot of energy. Uh, this is uh, uh, Ricky right here and that's, uh, he's taping up Juan. But if you look at all his expressions and everything like that, he's not doing anything intensely. He's kind of just like sitting there. Um, and, and I had to bring the images out with the lighting and setting the mood. The, um, his feeling of him feeling sick and kind of the quietness to it kind of adds tension to the images uh, but it was nothing like I said like I originally had planned and if you look right here this is kind of like lit nice dark and moody because I, I didn't want to see a lot of his expression a lot of his face because like, like I said he wasn't feeling uh, really feeling energetic or wanting to have photos taken of him that day so I made it work uh, you know with what I had and kind of right here, this, this shot right here, this is one of my favorites. Uh, but if you look again, he's doing nothing uh, intense, just kind of like standing there shadow boxing, uh, really kind of at half speed. He couldn't really go full speed the whole time, nor did I want him to go full speed because it, um, like I said, he was feeling ill and it was like a Tuesday uh, and his pro debut was that following, I think Friday or, or Saturday, a few days later. Last thing I want to do is push a fighter, make him feel even worse than they already did. Uh, and then he loses and then I feel like, it, like, you know, like I'm guilty of it. So, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of plans for this shoot, but like I said, they came out the window when he was not feeling well for this shoot, but we still made it work and I still got a ton of images that I absolutely love. So now to break down the lighting uh, for this image, uh, this is one of my favorite images from this session. Uh, and to kind of give you my approach for lighting, I tend to put up lights for three reasons. Uh, first reason that I put up lights is to throw shadows. Second reason is to fill those shadows in. And the third reason is to throw highlights. And that's not necessarily a rule of thumb that I follow. Um, and it's not something I do always in that order. Um, I think whenever anybody gives you like a sequence or a system or something for lighting, it's very limiting uh, and, uh, and you can't really follow a pre-cam formula when you're making images. You kind of have to know what you want or, or, or figure out what you want because like those three rules that I said don't always apply. Like this image is a perfect example. I put up uh, one light here at the far corner of the gym and this is just a light with, uh, it has a, a narrow beam reflector. It's way out in the corner. And that light basically I put up to throw shadows. And you can see her throwing uh, shadows here from the boxing gym and from this glove right here. And that was the first light that I kind of put up. And you kind of see, you, you strike one light and, and you see what you get. And the way I like to light, I like to light so my image is 100% lit by the strobes. So if the strobes don't go off, the image is pitch black. So when I, I put up one light and I strike it, I see what happens. So I put up this one at the far corner and it threw, you know, the shadows of the boxing ring right here and then the shadows from this glove right here, which I absolutely love. Uh, another thing that I absolutely love doing is playing with color temperature. So I love having warm cool all the time. So this is a daylight uh, balance strobe. And uh, uh, daylight is usually around 50, uh, 5,500 Kelvin. So if you expose this to 5,500 Kelvin, it gives you a regular color temperature and I don't want that. I like moody images. So my white balance on my camera was set to, usually I have it if I want to go uh, warm and cool, 
have it anywhere between, depending how moody I want, between 2500 Kelvin uh, and uh, 3200 Kelvin. And what that does is that turns daylight, uh, right here, a daylight strobe, it turns it uh, blue. So I put up that one light and I kind of really saw that, uh, saw that there, loved the shadows that it threw. Uh, so that's the first light I put up to throw shadows. And in this case, I also threw up another light here, which is kind of, this is on the, on the stand with the boom. And this light is kind of more overhead right here. And this has a, a 40 uh, degree grid. And that's what's lighting one right here. And this light is also thrown. Again, it's not in the order that, that I said that you know you, you throw up, uh, you put up a light to throw shadows, fill the shadows in, and throw highlights. Both of these lights were thrown. There's no fill here. Both of them were thrown, uh, were put up to throw shadows. So this light was put up here on a boom with a 40 degree grid to control the spill. Because if this didn't have this grid right here, all this right here would be lit too as well. Because that light would spill everywhere. What the grid does is it controls the, the beam spread. And you can see the shadow right here. So that beam, is con that light is controlled right here and it stops right there and it doesn't light this wall right here. And another thing that you also got to be aware and realize whenever you're shooting in your environment is the surfaces. So this surface right here is a wood floor. What that wood floor does is provides a natural fill and it kicks, backs up, kicks back up a little bit of light. So you can actually see Juan uh, a little bit of his face here. Uh, and the reason why this is warm, I'm shooting around, I would say 2700 Kelvin. And this is warm right here, because I usually, uh, what I like doing is put in either a uh, combination of cocktail of CTO uh, and uh, CTS gels on there. So those are just warming gels. There's no real formula for that. CTOs tend to give you more, slightly more magenta in the skin tone. CTS give you slightly more yellowish or, or greenish. Um, and to get the right formula in camera, I usually do a cocktail of, you know, like a quarter CTO, half CTS till I get it right, and I find this an impose. And again, kind of if you look here, this is uh, in, the sh in the reflection here in this image, and if you look at him here, his face is covered, because again, he wasn't really feeling energetic, he's not doing anything intense. If it were, if it were up to me, if he was feeling good, he, he wouldn't have this hoodie on, he'd be covered in sweater glycerin, and doing a way more intense, like full all out, like right hook or, or straight jab. Uh, with great facial expression, but you have no face expression here because like I said, he wasn't feeling good, so I had to make this image work. And sometimes when you, when you show up on set, um, you have to make your image almost subject proof, where it's so visually compelling that you could just place somebody in there, uh, regardless how they feel, regardless what action they're doing, and the image still works. And that's kind of what I had to do in this shoot, um, and that's the breakdown for this image.